Okay, let's get into the pitching. And this segment is called the Tale of Two Sangas because that's exactly what it is. Kodai Senga, he looked dominant in his outing last Tuesday against the Phillies, going seven scoreless, surrendering only one hit, striking out nine, and most importantly, walking zero batters. However, in his first start on regular rest since coming to the state, so since this entire season, his first start on regular rest, Senga only went two and two thirds innings, giving up four runs and walking five. So, Connor, do you think that losing that extra day of rest had that much of an impact on Kodai Senga's performance? It's tough to say because we've seen inconsistency from Senga with the extra rest all year. So do you do you rely on that as the sample size? Do you rely on the fact that maybe it was, as Ronnie pointed out in the broadcast, it's not like his stuff was diminished. His velocity was fine. But do you wonder, without the extra rest, was he overthrowing? And that's why he didn't have command mm-hmm. of the strike zone. So I think for Senga right now, it's tough for Senga, right? Because when you look coming into the season, the expectations were fair as him as a number three. That's kind of what he was paid to be. You knew yeah. there was going to be an acclimation period coming over from Japanese baseball. And having uh, Scherzer and Verlander in front of him, as expected, would you be able to live with the highs and lows of Senga as a number three? Well, Verlander missed a lot of time to start the season. Scherzer missed time as well with the suspension and was not right out of the gate. So it kind yeah. of thrusted Senga into being a number two, borderline number one, which isn't fair expectations. I think this is what people should have expected with the big adjustment period, and that's what we're seeing. So I don't necessarily attribute it to the rest. I just think this is the growing period Senga is naturally going to go through this first half of the season. And JJ, how would you go about using Kodai Senga in the future? So in a perfect world, you try to give him the extra rest because it is a duplicate of the routine he had for years when he was pitching in Japan. The problem is, as you get down the stretch of this year and you start going in the nitty gritty, let's say you're trying to make the playoffs. Let's say you're trying to push the Braves for a division title. Let's say you're in the playoffs. You may not have the luxury of Kodai Senga going on extra rest. So to me, and, and I know some fans didn't like the idea of Buck Walter saying, oh, we're going to pitch him on regular rest. No, this is a good thing. He's going to have to experience it a couple of different times throughout the yeah. regular season. So that way come September and that way come October, hopefully, he's accustomed to it. It's not a culture shock for him doing it for the first time. So this yeah. is something the Mets had to straighten out. I think they're going to try to get him his extra day of rest as often as they can. But you're going to see it now from time to time over the course of the year. Hey, let's see how he handles pitching on regular rest. And we finally got a Kodai Senga home start that was like one of his road starts. So maybe that means one of his road starts is going to be like one of his home starts, guys. I don't know. (laughs) I like that perspective, JJ. (laughs) We'll have to see how that one goes. But I think that there was a little bit from Mets fans, at least a little bit of panic when they did see that final line from him. So I think that the perspective – from both of you on that is really important. Okay, let's get into the rest of the rotation. Max Scherzer, since his last off day, has put together two seven-inning, one earned run outings. Connor, what do you think has been clicking for Max as of late? Just the variety of pitches that he could throw. We've seen Max, when he might not have a put-away fastball, be able to go to a curveball and locate that pitch. We've seen him obviously need to crank it up and use the fastball when necessary. Max is just the ultimate gamer, and I know that's a cliche term for a lot of great veteran pitchers, but that's exactly what Scherzer is. And he's a guy that wants to work deep into games. I think he understands his body at this point of his career, where some nights he can come in and he goes, I can overpower these guys. And some nights he looks at a lineup and go, maybe I'm not at 100% like I was when I was 30 years old, and I'm going to rely more on a mix of off-speed pitches. So I love what I've seen from Scherzer. I'm not surprised. He feels like a guy that can pitch with power when he has it and can pitch with a mix of pitches when he needs to go that route as well. So Scherzer, very, very promising stretch here for the Mets, and this is who he is. Yeah. I want to come to you, JJ, on Justin Verlander. He went a solid six innings, giving up only a solo shot to George Springer in the first. He also threw a season-high 117 pitches. Does it concern you, JJ, to see Verlander throw this many pitches at this point in the season? No, I love it. Chelsea, maybe this is the old school baseball guy in me. Maybe I'm a relic, but Justin Verlander has <laughs> been doing this his entire big league career. And yeah. he felt strong. He made the one mistake to George Springer in the first inning for the leadoff homer. It felt like he got better as the game went along. And yeah. I applaud Buck Showalter. He said in that sixth inning, all right, big dog. All right, go get it. Try to find a way to finish off this sixth inning. And he did. Yeah. 
Um, it's something Verlander is going to be able to do, and he's been fine. Listen, I know the goal for ball has been a little bit of an issue. I know he had that stinker at Coors Field. I'm going to sound like a, you know one of these guys that's making all sorts of excuses. That's fine. Plenty of guys go to Coors Field and pitch like garbage. Justin Verlander, you're not alone in that regard, especially when it comes to big-time pitchers. He's going to be fine. Just keep him and Scherzer on the mound every fifth day. The Mets need that. Yeah. <laughs>